people make mistakes, you got to forgive them. Yeah, yeah, right. You see, I heard it's illegal to kill people, so you got to forgive people, right? <laughs> so no matter how bad you want to, you got to forgive them and get to that spot. I, I shared before that I met my dad by accident when I was 36 years old. You know, I was born in the ghetto in Spain. The minute my dad knew I was coming, he demanded my mother. And back in 1969, uh, that was horrible. It's horrific. And she comes from a Catholic church. She has a child out of wedlock. She sat at the back table. She was never allowed to eat at the table. And that's something if there was food left. It was a tough time for my mother. Came to America when I was four. An American soldier married my mother. Adopted me in his own. After several, several years, I decided to go back to Spain. I took my wife to Spain before we adopted her girls. I said, let's go to Spain. I haven't been there in a long time. I have a lot of family there and aunts and uncles. Let's go take a trip. So we did. When we got there, my aunt says, hey, do you want to go to church Sunday? I said, yes. She goes, do you want to go to the early service or the morning or afternoon? I said, let's go to the morning. Because I remember my grandma taking me to church every Sunday morning. She goes, oh, man, the old people, there are in the early. Go to the later service. It's more contemporary. I said, no, man. I want to honor my grandma. She took me in the morning. I want to go in the morning. Amen. So I walked out. Um, I went to the service. As I'm walking out, I get a tap on my shoulder. And this is how the conversation goes. Aren't you Manuel, son? I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, I knew it. You look just like your father. I said, thank you. And she walked away. Instantly, my aunt, my aunt came up and said, what did she say? What did she say? I said that she said that I look like my father. And she said she would know. That would have been your nanny. Mm. See, he was born on a very wealthy track of the world. A world that, you know, of big networks. We were born on a very poor track. We couldn't even afford a watchdog. If we heard a burglar, we'd start barking. It would be poor. <laughs> That's just how it worked. There was 11 of us in a three bedroom apartment. At any time, there was three, four of us on the bed sleeping. One group would go to work, one group would come back, another group would leave. As we're walking back, she said, uh, Honey, I've been wanting to ask you, my aunt, this for a long time. Would you like to meet him? I said, My father. She says, Yes. I promise you that I find an entire trip to Spain. I never once in my mind thought of trying to find my father. I got a father who adopted me when I was four, right? It's the only man I call dad. I never in my mind thought of going to chase and looking for someone who had never. I don't know why it happens, but when people look at my wife, they go, wow, she's gorgeous. I'm like, am I that ugly? <laughs> but, but, I got to it's something wrong with me. I mean, golly. So, so they're tripping. I'm like, golly, I mean, all right. So um, I asked my wife, I said, what should I do? What should I do? And she says, you already know what you're going to do because you've done it your whole life. You're going to be there. You wouldn't be able to function even properly after this experience if you did. So I told my aunt, I said, listen, I will be at the pool cabana tomorrow at 4 o'clock. If my father wants to meet me, he'll come. He got there so early, he waited in the car, and he soaked two or three shirts. Um, as I saw him coming, the distance was huge, and it's like the, from the parking lot to here. So I didn't want to kind of look up because it was uncomfortable. But as he got closer and closer and closer, I finally stood up. I walked right towards him. He embraced me. And he said the words I've always wanted to hear. The words you've already predicted. He said, I'm sorry. And I said, I said, Dad, it's okay. Because I forgave you a long time ago. Amen. Amen. Don't wait 36 years yeah. to find peace. Mm. I don't know if it's a letter you need to write it. 
door you need to knock on, a phone call you need to make. But don't let 36 year old cry without forgiving someone that's done you wrong. It released me beyond um, measure. Thank you guys so much for having me. First of all, um, I'm delighted to be partnering with you. You know, I, I get the privilege to work with some great, incredible organizations, but when it comes to faith-based organizations, it comes to faith-based work, when it comes to kingdom work, and at the end of the day, this is kingdom work. Life, lives will be changed. It's not about, you know, pretty buildings or nice stuff. This is about that God's going to get another soul because of the great work that's First time I met the Joshua House of Worship was at the event February 19th. You know, when I sense God's very presence in your life. I absolutely do not believe in accidents or mistakes. I know people say that. I don't, you know, but I really don't. Um, I, I sense the hand of God in this house. Um, your leadership has embraced me um, in, in, in a way that you don't always get embraced by other organizations because they're not all faith-based. Um, a lot of the times when I work with companies, they're very profit-driven. You know, and what we do affects their shareholders, and you know, so it's always about money. Where um, even though money is part of the equation because we want to reach our goals, that's what builds buildings and libraries and hospitals. Um, I sense a peace about this, um, especially with your staff and your leaders that has been very loving and very welcoming. Um, I also sense that we all have the same vision. Mm -hmm. and, and I will tell you the thing that destroys most in, in, is this thing called greed in organizations when everybody's trying to make a name for themselves and they, they become islands and, and there's no island here, I sense unity. So um, that's really important because it's kind of like when I, you know, what I mentioned before that sometimes we may step on each other's toes or, you know, we're not trying to be intentional, we're not trying to be, and when you know that you can say, I'm sorry I made a mistake because we're headed in the right direction and you have that base of being loving and forgiving, knowing in the name of progress, um, I sense that here, where with other organizations, and I've worked some great, and they're not all that way. There's some that have unity, but a lot of them are very um, self-driven, which is why I, I, I've limited my work to almost nonprofits and faith-based now, because it's just there. It's a different kind of presence. It's it's and and me as a believer, I know that this is kingdom work, mm -hmm. and and when I sense unity and I sense that you know we've got a great net and we've got great members and we've got. You know, the engine's ready to run and we're ready to roar. I just can't see how we will fail. So, um, you know, so that, that in, in short, I, I'm, I'm delighted to partner with you guys. Um, this, I can't wait to my family visits, you know. It, it's been it's Easter stuff, as you know, so they, my girls have all had big obligations. But um, it, it, this is really uh, the beginning of a beautiful relationship. And, mm -hmm. and, and I will be there the, the day you preach that first sermon. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm just honored to be part of this journey with you. And, and I'm grateful to, to partner with you because it's... Um, it's very rewarding work. At the end of the day, when I look in the mirror, um, I'm really happy that um, that God gets all the thanks and all the praise, and that I'm able to somehow be used as His instrument. Because um, I've been through some stuff that I've shared. I've been through some roller coasters, and and um, I've been humbled more than once. And 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 I think now at this stage, it's um, you know, it's kind of like maturity. You know, and you, you know what you know at 18, you know what you know at 20, but now I'm 42 next month, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not 20 no more. <laughs> so, um, so, and we get the, as a team, you know, um, and, you know, we all know the acronym, together everyone achieves more, and, um, and no one has to do it by themselves, so um, I'm just grateful to be part of the journey to fellowship with you guys here.